Okay, Assalamualaikum and good evening. So, today we're going to continue with our... Okay, we're going to continue with experiment 5 under Cloud and Drive. So, this experiment is supposedly going to be very short. Considering, I think uh, most of us already familiar with um, Google Drive and uh, Google Collab. So it's supposed to be very, very short and you know, concise. Lah. But that's it. Uh, the major requirement for you now is to create an account with the, with the service provider. Lah. For example, in this case, uh, Autodesk, Tinkercad, and also OneDrive. Uh, so you might want to log in to your Gmail using your UITM email and then uh, register your your account from there okay um yep okay uh, uh announcement attendance eh? make sure everyone take your your future link i'll be i'll this week i think i'll start to audit not to say audit lah, but try to record everything so that uh because i've already uh, receive email to from HEA uh, that they want the report of ketidakhadiran laporan ketidakhadiran class so yeah i if i found that because this is 75 percent is based on lab attendance and submission eh? so attendance is critical and therefore i want to make sure that everyone at the very least has attend the class okay that's it uh make sure to click the your future link eh? uh, you are allowed up until 80 percent attendance uh sorry not allowed you, you are expected to attend 80 percent of the class and hopefully most of you are able to comply with that yang uh, dia ada kelas punya uh, apa announcement pun benda lain tapi tak apalah it's okay lah i think the most important is just the attendance list okay so uh, the sooner we start the sooner we end the session uh, the lab so hopefully everyone okay lah so before we start i want to make sure everyone turn on their cameras one thing and that everyone has logged in to their uitm email okay so in this application, we will, there are one part of the experiment that actually requires you to download. But for me, I think uh, we'll just bypass that. Uh. We'll just use the web-based punya application. Okay. Never mind. Okay, so um, make sure you guys uh, log into your Gmail UITM, email UITM, and then uh, we'll start. Okay, so for experiment five, basically what we'll be doing is more on uh, cloud and drive. Basically, you have to have internet connection to uh, to send or receive your data to the service provider. So we'll be using cloud software, cloud storage, and cloud computing. Basically, cl cloud software is Tinkercad, cloud storage is OneDrive, and cloud computing is your Google Collab, which is Python, the one that we've done previously, uh, as modern and up-to-date engineering tools. OK, um, this is, I think, moving forward for your generation, I think, uh, doing your works online will become the the norm meaning in my in my my mother's punya generation dulu every single thing they have to type they have to go to the library they have to uh, make a book about everything that they want to do and for my generation it's more on still mobile uh, same as you but uh, the mobility is quite Orang kata uh, limited lah. Macam contoh zaman saya uh, ada diskette and ada pen drive. So diskette is the the safe icon that you see there. I think your generation haven't seen a diskette in your lifetime because it's already been a few generations back, 1990s. 
So uh, icon save tu is actually uh, floppy disk. Ada yang besar, ada yang kecil. Yang besar uh, is, if I'm not mistaken, around 700 megabyte. And the diskette yang kecil save icon ni is 1.44 MB. So uh, you can imagine lah, if I save a document or or a PDF file, it's typically not going to be more than 10 or 50 PDF or words lah. So if I want to save coursework punya kerja for the whole diploma back then, it would took me 10 uh, for one semester, I guess, 10 for each subject. So I need to carry that uh, diskette back then uh, to allow me to do the thing, half of the things that you're doing right now. Okay, and then moving forward, nowadays, uh, even though we still use pen drive and whatnot, we are slowly starting to adopt internet uh, storage. Lah. That means, uh, even though kita still pakai hard disk SSD apa semua, but uh, we can now, for a simple manual lab, for example like this, you can store it on the internet, and as long as there is a connection, uh, internet has no problem. Uh, even the streamix, uh, yang tipe apa, package paling murah pun, you will have no problem lah. Stack and upload and download data. So, moving forward, I think uh, maybe your son or your daughter punya future nanti, chances are dah tak ada dah pakai pen drive, dah tak ada dah pakai computer kat ya. Everything is being done on the internet. I think lah, considering now we are moving toward 5G, uh, internet pun dah start, uh, I think Japan ke Korea, yang kelajuan dia, speed dia tu dah bertera-tera byte lah. So, uh, I think moving forward, we are going to be more on that lah. So, uh, that said, uh, the immediate thing that you're going to learn from this lab is more on to help you with your final year project. Tinkercad, uh, Google Drive, uh, OneDrive and also Python may, you may want to use it later down the road lah, as you, as you go, uh, as you proceed with your coursework. So uh, this is where we learn about this, uh, cloud services. Uh. And then uh, the object, the second objective is to apply cloud software, cloud storage and cloud computing to solve engineering problem. And in this case, we'll be using Python to solve a mathematical uh, trigonometry. And then to understand the limitation of cloud software, cloud storage and cloud computing. So cloud, uh, the, although it is very convenient for you to use everything cloud services, but the problem is that there are certain um, limitation where the developer of the software may not include everything that is available in the physical world. For example, um, uh, I think uh, infrared is a good example because infrared, if you want to simulate infrared in uh, Tinkercad, for example, in this software, you may not be able to see uh, the effect of water passing through RFID, uh, infrared IR, sorry. So you can't simulate that. There's no way for you to simulate the application of infrared, given that infrared in the simulate in the Tinkercad is just a symbol. So you might want to use your imagination. Lah. Basically for me, if you can't, uh, because ni memang typically what student will get back to me lah after doing the our final year project. They, they check up uh, after doing some initial work, they found out that their circuit doesn't run. And bila saya tengok doesn't run tu rupa-rupanya, dia nak try to simulate, what you call that, um, ultrasonic sound, ultra, ultrasonic sensor. Of course, you can't do that via Tinkercad because uh, Tinkercad can only show to you the basic uh, operation of a component. They, they can't illustrate sound moving out or maybe communicate with your speakers to produce sound. No, they can't. I mean, actually they could, but even this is a free software, I don't think they'll extend their application to that uh, extent. Lah. Maybe in the future, I don't know. But that said, there are certain limitations that you might want to use your uh, creativity more rather than engineering uh, technical solutions. 
So that said, uh, this is where we try to explore uh, what are the available limitation uh, as we go along with the lab. Okay, so uh, the, the tools that you may want for this lab is only your personal computer and your internet connection. So please, uh, I think if everyone have been able to join me here today, I think everyone has internet connection and it's not going to consume much of the data. It's just uh, sending one file and transporting it across a several platform in order for you to see the effect of the, you know, the uh, web applications. Okay, so uh, all the other details here, you can read it by yourself, but in essence, Cloud and Drive is basically is defined as everything that you're using that does not, I mean, uh, that does not exist in your computer. Meaning, Tinkercad software, you don't have to install it. It's readily available from the internet, so you don't have to download anything except for the file that you have created, uh, the design that you have done. You can download it into your software, but into your computer but the software itself it's free you can just go to their website you don't have to download anything you could you can if you want to if you want to do on offline version but for online uh, if you don't want to install like me i just want to use it for a simple circuit and uh, you can just browse it don't have to download it so that is an example of cloud and drive uh, and then sorry that is an example of cl cloud software and then cloud storage is instead of pen drive, instead of hard disk, you just store everything uh, on the cloud. Lah. Like for me, for example, my daily life, when I receive my salary, what I typically do, I'll, I'll settle kind of all the bills and all the payments. And then all the records, everything I recorded from the cloud, in the cloud. So if there's hackers, they boleh lah nak tengok. But for me, it's nothing yang critical sangat pun, tak apalah. But because the convenience is there and and supposedly certain cloud services uh, they are it's quite safe that means um hacking tu macam tak berbaloi lah kalau dia nak ambil pun so it's uh, but because you lah jangan lalu tak benda-benda yang critical sangat lah that said uh, it's convenience that means if i i'm using a myriad of uh, devices for myself i have two laptops, one desktop, one iPad, one laptop, uh, one uh, handphone. So if there's a business meeting, if there's a, a progress work that needs to be updated, I can just, across these uh, devices, I can just access the file that I wanted uh, almost immediately. I guess you guys pun tahu kan, apa itu cloud storage. It's uh, convenient lah nowadays, even though you do open yourself to uh, Malicious software juga lah kalau nak, bukan malicious software, malicious intent lah kalau ada hackers ke apa tapi uh, I don't think it's going to be that critical lah for me, for you, I don't know. Okay, and then cloud computing is uh, the one that we've done in lab 4, lab 3, I forgot, but uh, the Python lab where we use Google Colab. So basically what it does is uh, every calculation, every algorithm that you define is being done online. You don't have to download anything except for the file that you have uh, code. Uh, that's all. So you don't have to install anything. So everything is done in the internet, like the one that we did uh, in lab three, I guess. Uh, you just download the code. Okay, so uh, for the procedures, uh, I hope you guys have already done this uh, as, per, as per what I had advised yesterday which is to set up your UITM email in Microsoft 365 and also to activate your Gmail punya account. Eh? And I want you to get into that uh, account eh? because uh, for Tinkercad, you have to uh, create a uh, part A, which we'll be going now. Uh, but for Google activation and also Office 365 activation, for those who haven't yet, please do so. It's going to be a simple direct forward, yeah? just baca and then put in your details. Lah. So I expect this to be done yesterday. Okay, so we continue with part A, cloud software. So if you click the link, you will be able to see this. Uh, let me try. Okay. Ah. Okay, when I, I'm using Google Chrome as my default browser, is it showing now or no? 
Uh, it's showing the different one. Let me close this OBS. Windows capture. Okay, uh, this is the one. Uh, when I click the link, I'll be able to see this because I've already um, created an account here. So everything is uh, almost immediately like, because I, I'm lo currently logged in via via my uh, staff UITM email. So they, I've already done this. So for you, you might want to follow the steps like, because I can't actually delete this account because it would take me some time. So I hope you guys have already done the sign in with Google. I, that's the step. That's the only step where you click the link, join now, create a personal account, which is the same uh, the same interface like this, and then sign in with Google, the, the one with the Google logo there, and then sign into your, your item email. Of course, you can use your own email, but I think uh, why clutter yourself? Everything that got to do with works, with university works, just put it under your UITM email. So that you, and then let's say at the end of your studies and you don't want to use that email again, or maybe that email isn't active yet, uh, isn't active after that, you just download everything, transfer it to your file, to your uh, set, uh, custom file or whatever file that you want to use. So any formula, if I were you, I would, Anything that got to do with UITM words, I'll just put under my UITM email. So in this case, uh, please sign in with the whatever email that you want to use, but I advise the UITM email. Lah. Okay, once you've done that, we should be in the uh, Tinkercad tutorial, uh, the Tinkercad uh, interface here. So what you should need to, uh, what you need to do is to go to circuits and then create new circuits. So I've already done this with the other class, but we'll just restart the work. So this is the top toolbar. This is the work plane. This is where your circuit will be con uh, constructed. And this is your uh, component, component what? Uh, component list lah that you can use. So for the next step, we'll try to conduct, construct a circuit based on LED resistance and also battery source so we will just take one icon the resistant icon and then just hold it and then leave it and then put it on the canvas for now we'll leave it like that and then take led drop it down to the canvas and then your coin cell battery okay now uh, we want to change the property setup and uh, the properties of the component so for led let it remain red so in order for you to change the properties just click on the uh, on the icon so you'll be able to edit the properties so for example uh led red so leave it like that uh. and if you want to change the led name to maybe led and then that's all uh. just change the name and then leave it like and leave it uh, as long as there's all changes is being saved you don't have to worry okay and then for your resistance it only want 22 ohm so 22 ohm uh, click on the icon change this to 22 make sure it is in ohm not kilo ohm and then name i just put it there but the the, the main problem the main thing is the value eh, not the name and then for the coin battery, you don't have to change anything because it's already 3 volt, more than sufficient. And then uh, if you want to move around, just hold your left button and then move it around. And if you lift up your fingers, then you can't move it again. Okay, then if you want to, let's say, zoom in, zoom out, just scroll in, scroll out. Uh, your wheel mouse button, that should be okay. But you can't rotate. Eh? You can't rotate this uh, skirt. This and then uh, uh, you have to connect each of the icon. So for me, I am with my OCD. I like to arrange everything nicely. So in order for you to arrange it, you have to click on, and uh, you have to hover your mouse under the, under the what you call that, the leg of the component. So for example, this is the end not leg, which is the the one that connected to the resistance. So we'll just single click single left click 
on the red box there and then single left click at, at around the what you call that the location of the resistance then connect it to the the foot of the uh, the resistance doesn't matter which foot because again resistance don't have polarity eh? you can just plug it in okay the same goes for your batteries and the resistance just connect it using the red box and then the other side of the resistor uh, the battery single click single click single left click single left click single left click and around the same area of the led fit and then connect it to the red box finish then uh, they advise us to click start simulation there the led light up so this shows that this circuit works i mean this is a simple circuit you don't expect anything much lah. so if you stop the simulation the led will not light up and you start it again it will light up so that shows that the circuit works any questions so far no sir no sir simple enough eh? and that's why i don't want to do face to face because he, this is very short lab and I think everyone will be able to do it so might as well just relax okay so uh, if uh, we there's no issue kita proceed to the next part which is to use a multimeter from the search box so we want to measure the total current and voltage so in this case, they want us to want change. Uh, so uh, they want us to use multimeter and connect it, connect the circuit to measure the amperage. So you, they want to measure the ampere. So now it is ampere. So now. If you look at this circuit, okay, I understand some of you might not have a good basics on electrical, what do you call that? Electrical, uh, electronic circuit, sorry, electronic circuit. So, can somebody tell me, tell me, what is this connection name? Is it series or parallel? Series, sir. This is series, are you sure? Okay, so if I, okay, that's, I mean, uh, don't be, don't be, don't be afraid if you're wrong. It's actually good that we, we can learn from being right, uh, being wrong more than being right. So it's good that you're wrong so that I can gauge your knowledge. Huh? So, so for example, in this circuit here, so if I draw equivalent circuit, it will look like this. This is the LED. This is the resistance. And this is the battery source. And then it will go back to the LED and this is the ground. So if we are putting it like this, what you're doing is actually you're putting it the multimeter like this. This is ampere because they want us to measure ampere. And you have to remember to measure voltage, uh, sorry, to measure ampere, you have to do it in series. This is actually parallel, which is wrong right so if you want to measure voltage then you have to change uh, this would be correct lah, if you want to measure voltage which is voltage is parallel but since you want to measure uh, current which is ampere which is supposed to be in series the circuit should look like this hold on yeah this is the resistance and this is the ampere okay this is series series eh? se siri ni se lari se lari uh, macam ni se siri macam ni kan uh, so it's, uh, don't worry if you're given the wrong answer it's good uh, because we learn so much more from being incorrect rather than correct and now Okay, you have to understand lab manual. They memang sengaja they put some error here and there so that they got you to think. They want to show 
whether you're thinking or not to your uh, to your to your lecturers lah. so in this case it shows that uh you're thinking but maybe it's the wrong kind of thinking lah. so this is what is expected this is actually more on parallel this one eh? between this but um this is in parallel and this is in series so actually what we need to do if you want to measure ampere because we are in the mode of ampere you should delete this and this will be connected to the negative end and the red positive end should be connected to the resistance ah, okay so one more thing if you want to like me you have an ocd or something like that you can uh, make sure it, uh, it looks cleaner by clicking and rearranging the line here lah. Saya ada OCD sikit, so saya nak buat cara cantik, saya cantikkan sikit. Ni pun tak cantik sangat ni. Okay, uh, so this is series. So you should be doing this rather than this one. Ni memang sengaja dia nak trap awak. Okay, so now, um, okay lah, boleh lah. Uh, that's it for your current. So you can start simulation and it will show you the value. Okay, now. Saya memang sengaja swap awak tu because I understand you guys are not very familiar and haven't done much of um, lab works in terms of electronics. So that's why I say swap knowledge, that kind of knowledge, is especially for those yang doesn't, don't come from technical school. So, but for those, uh, and then uh, for to return the favor that I've given to you, I want you to tell me what's the difference between this Ya, ya, saya betulkan. And this, as you can see, current is the same. When you tapped it before the resistance, it shows twenty-seven point one milliamp. And you tapped it after the resistance, you will also get 27.1 milliamp. Supposedly, if you understand correctly, there should be a, a current drop or voltage drop. So if you if there's a voltage drop, there's a current drop lah as you move along the resistance. So I want you to tell me in your lab sheet why this happens. Supposedly, there should be some reduction here in the current. Okay. So that's it. Uh, you have to ni lah. Uh, ambil gambar yang tadi tu, yang ampere tadi tu, and then put that into your lab sheet. And this discussion, why it is the same value, put under it. Just uh, a brief uh, sentence lah, kot, for me to gauge your understanding of uh, electronic circuit. Okay. So once you've done this. Uh, you need to save it to prove to me your work. Of course, you you have to apa ni bukan save untuk ni. You have to cap screen capture and then uh, because we want to we want to play around with this file, you might want to export this lah to your computer. So in this case, okay. So we I want to use lab five part. Make sure eh, when you're naming the file, moving forward, jangan ada space, jangan ada symbol ke depan. So make sure nama tu, kalau nak pakai space, pakai macam ni. The underscore. Okay, so save and now it will start to download to your computer. And, okay, saya dah ada tapi saya tak boleh nak tunjuk. Uh, tak apalah, dia dah download ke dalam saya punya uh, download folder. Nanti bila perlu nanti saya tunjuklah. But for now, kita tengok yang uh, saya cakap lagi pula. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, so done untuk part A. So we look at the exercise because this should be also included into your lab, uh, lab sheet. So in your exercise, the uh, lab asked you to measure all the ampere rate and also the voltage between the LED, the resistance, and also the battery. So we only done the resistance. 
then you need to measure the LED and the battery lah. So kalau nak mudah tak payahlah ulang-ulang-ulang. Copy paste je lah. So from like this for example, multimeter, control C, control V. Eh tak boleh. Tak boleh. And drop lah. Okay. So you can either click on the icon or what you can do is click on the the A, V and R ni. A. Oh, tadi boleh. Never mind. Tadi saya buat boleh. Tak tahu kenapa. Okay, so uh, current, current and then tukar voltage pula. And how do you measure the voltage? Like this lah. Dah ada example lah pun. Okay. So you can export and rename the file as your matrix ID because again, remember this report is individual report, that sheet. So um, you can put it there, your matrix number, but ultimately it's your file lah. You don't have to submit this file to me. It's just for your usage. So inilah, taruh je lah apa-apa nama pun tak. Okay. Any problems regarding part A? No, sir. No, eh? Simple enough, right? So as you can see, Tinkercad is very convenient, especially for you guys before you purchase your resistance, you purchase your capacitance for your final year project. You might want to check the actual value, whether the circuit will work or not. Again, with the limitation that there are certain devices that may not work as per what you expect. Like for example, this one, ultrasonic distance sensor. Uh, I, I think this one should be able to produce sound. I think for this one, yeah, it should, should be working. Oh, sorry, the distance sensor, it should be working, yeah. It won't produce sound. It's just based on radar. This will transmit, this will receive. So the, if you connect it to the, what do you call that? Where's the screen? Monitor. There should be a monitor here. Uh, LCD screen. If you connect it to your LCD screen, uh, accordingly to the pin, you sh should be able to see the distance lah, as a result of the uh, ultrasonic sensor. But there are certain uh, application, for example, maybe camera. I did a camera. Let me check. Uh, no camera, but for example, this one, the vibration motor. So if you put it here and you try to run it, of course your monitor won't vibrate, your mouse won't vibrate. But there, there you have to use creativity where each of the detection of the vibration will produce certain amount of uh, voltage or current. Uh, so that is actually where you be able to see whether your circuit is correct or not based on the variation of the current and voltage. Uh, that's it, of course, it's going to be a, a, a little bit uh, ahead of your level right now, but for, for you, I would like to advise, if your circuit doesn't work, make sure, is there any workaround? Macam maybe because limitation of, because of the uh, Tinkercad, there are actually various ways that you can do to alleviate that, alleviate that. Uh, so, uh, be creative lah. There is a limitation, but you can actually overcome it by becoming by uh, be more being more creative lah. Okay. So that's the limitation on uh, Tinkercad, but ultimately it's very convenient because uh, for simple circuit, you can test before you buy the component because buying a component can cost you around hundred or two hundred. Eh? So it's might as well might be well for you to invest in the knowledge first before proceed with buying the component. Okay, so if there's no question, we move on to cloud storage, which is basically just your Microsoft OneDrive. Okay, the problem here is that I when one once I gone through the steps, apparently what happened is they it has installed everything in my computer. 
Now I could re uninstall it and reinstall it back, but I think that would defeat the purpose because it's actually very straightforward. But just to save you, uh, to show to you some, yeah. basically what you need to do on your taskbar. Uh, can I show my screen? Hold on, yeah. Give me a second. All right. So if I if what what it meant here is just for you to type search OneDrive and there should be OneDrive app there. So if you clicked on it, uh, because I've already set it up, so I don't I'm not able to see the setup OneDrive now. But uh, I've tried it. It should be straightforward. So what you need to do is just sign in to your UITM email because UITM gives you, if I'm not mistaken, one terabyte, eh? quite huge. Compared to Google Drive, they'll only give you 15 GB. But for OneDrive, uh, you can store movies, you can store uh, music or so whatever that you want to store it uh, in OneDrive, quite uh, extensive. And of course, I'm not sure whether when you graduated, whether that uh, account will still be applicable. But at the very least, it's there lah, for you to use for the time being. Okay, so uh, if you want to set it up, you have to sign in your to your UITM email, and then uh, click next, next, next. Make sure to for me, I advise since uh, what do you call that? Uh, since we have limited amount of uh, read and write application to your sorry, sorry, share new plug. Window, window projector, All right? Okay. Since we have certain uh, a finite amount of read and write that you can use in your SSD, should you have it in your laptop, my advice to you is to install your OneDrive in your mechanical hard disks because mechanical hard disks typically will last you forever, where SSD. A certain amount of period, maybe after five or six years, you might want to change your SSD because the degradation of the SSD performance and it can go kaput quite, uh, I mean, uh, after a certain period of time. Lah. So, my advice is to change the location to your hard man, mechanical hard disk. So, for me, in my case, uh, I put it under. Let me open my PS. Uh, Hold on, yeah. Okay. So uh, I put my OneDrive in uh, D. So as you can see, it consumes 32.3 uh, GB. Uh, there's movies, games I, I put under my OneDrive because UITM belanja again, banyak. So why do I need to, why, or why would I want to store everything? Oh, tak nampak eh. Sorry eh. What happened? Tak speed lah. Okay. okay, so uh, as you can see, I have 32.3 GB. Uh, okay, 32.3 GB. So uh, it's not advisable for you to put it in your SSD or your OS lah, because it will consume much of your free space. So that said, make sure to change the location to whatever this uh, drive that you want. But uh, ultimately, just click next, next, next. And if you've managed to fulfill everything correctly, you should be able to see your OneDrive University technology here on your left pane. Is it too small? Uh, my font is very, because I'm using a very, not to say very large monitor, lah, but 27 inch. So I'm... I don't want to zoom. I can't zoom basically. And I don't want to use different font. So, 
So make sure you did you did all that uh, as the steps showed to you. Okay, once you've completed that, what they want in part B is actually to transfer your BRD file that you have just created just now, uh, just then, to this location here. So this is the one. So if I, okay, this is my, uh, what you call that? So this is uh, my OneDrive location. So I'll take this, lab 5 part A, put it into OneDrive. That's all, part B, settle. And it will automatically, cut it. So it will automatically sync. And uh, that's the beauty of OneDrive, where it will automatically sync uh, the data that the file that you have removed or included automatically you don't have to do anything as compared to, to google drive eh? so this is part b settle okay and as compared to google drive uh when you have to get in into your uatm email or if possible if you want to do that eh? or you can download it if you want to have an offline version. So in this case, they, they are showing to you the offline version where you need to download the Google Drive. Again, Google Drive, there's no benefit of you putting it in your SSD. Uh, put it, my device is split into your mechanical hard drive. So in this case, in my case, I put it under my hard disk here. I've already set up everything. And uh, Basically, what it's trying to show to you after you finish download, you should be able to see your Google Drive at the left pane, uh, left side pane, and then uh, you can just open it via your DAP, your file explorer. Lah. Okay, so uh, you can all, uh, basically in Google Drive section part B, what you they want you to do is again to upload the BR the board file that you have created using Tinkercad into your google drive which is like that just copy and just up and drag and drop so this this is my personal google drive so i don't want this so i just delete it it will automatically sync now the reason why it's uh, the difference between google drive and OneDrive is that google drive has a very limited amount uh, you attend by your license google drive so but basically, what you will have is 15 GB, which is more than sufficient actually. But uh, Google Drive, ni, I think the newest update requires you to uh, search for Drive. Okay, you have to run this app because if not, you won't be able to see the blue tick, the green tick sorry where is it yeah the green tick here because uh i think this year's punya update so they automatically automatic sync um, but i guess some people they um what do you call that uh don't like that feature so in order for you to use this you every single time you make changes in your offline file you need to type in OneDrive. Uh, sorry google drive or just drive and then run the app and then will it only and then will it only sync? So in order for you to make sure that it sync, you can look at your taskbar, make sure there's a Google Drive here icon here. So that means it's currently running. So any changes you made in the offline file will directly impact the the uh, Google Drive on your online. So how to check whether it is actually uploaded? So let's say, for example, I put there let five part A dot BRD. So in a way for you to check is to go to your Google Drive. Uh, no, not this one because I'm using my personal Google Drive. So let me go to my Gmail first, then click Google Drive. So okay, if it's work, if it works, I should be able to see. Lab 5 part A.BRD, this one. Ah, macam ni, ni pagi tadi punya. So, saya dah buang. So, ah, ni lah. Dia sepatutnya link lah. So, saya dah tambah baru. So, dia tambah baru automatically. So, let's say for example, I delete this. I don't want it anymore. So, I could 
give it a second. Refresh this website. Hmm, tak ada dah. Tak saya dah delete. Automatic. Okay, tu je lah nak tunjuk sebenarnya. Okay, so that's all for part B. Which is to, you have, but you have to ni eh. Capture, screen capture the file macam tadi tu saya tunjuk. Uh, what you need to do is open your Google Drive offline, online and offline. Make sure you put that let five part A here and I want to see let five part A over here. And that is actually what you need to put in your lab sheet. I think your generation dah biasalah benda ni. Tapi just for the sake of recording, make sure to put the proof there. Uh, okay, they, the exercise asks you to upload the BRD file with your student ID to your instructor's drive but I don't think this is an issue for you so I, saya tak nak lah ni, tak payahlah, serabut je, saya tahu apa dia buat so no point lah yang ni, just abaikan eh, exercise one ni. But uh, then we do with part C, okay part C is the one that we've done in the other lab, lab 3 if I'm not mistaken, let me delete this. Give me a second, Google Collab. Where did I put my Google Collab? It's supposed to be here. Okay. Okay, so uh, for, again, uh, before we proceed, are there questions? Any questions in regard to Part B? Sir, no, kan, eh? um, just say please in there. Hmm. Sir, so, kalau yang OneDrive ni kan, saya punya komputer dia dah memang siap ada tau. Lepas tu kalau, mm. lepas tu saya dah log in uh, yang UITM punya kan. Mm. Lepas tu kalau masukkan file ni, macam mana nak bagi dia sync dengan yang ni? Sebab yang ni lain punya email. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, you can download, re-download the OneDrive tu lagi sekali. And then... Uh, steps tu tu uh, login tu rasanya uh, hmm. let me check pasal nanti uh, dia akan ubah tak yang lain macam lock screen semua uh, uh, dia tak akan ubah yang lock screen dia akan ubah macam ni saya ada dua ni uh, sorry saya, saya tunjuk okay so for example in my case I have two OneDrive Uh, so the the OneDrive actually the same lah ni sebab ni ni tapi basically what I expect if you log out of your current OneDrive and you log in to your UITM OneDrive you'll be having two OneDrive in your left pane so it will consume quite uh, an amount lah to your uh, hard disk sebab satu OneDrive dah satu apa dah ada dia own apa uh, file The other one drive pun dah ada their own file, so it's consume that much lah. But for me, if actually you boleh je pakai yang you punya one drive yang existing tu, if you want to use it, and then uh, paste the file into your one drive if you don't want to have the other one drive dalam your PC. Uh, itu yang one drive university ni sebab saya advice sebab dia bagi size besar dia. But if you have your own, pakai je lah yang tu. Sebab nanti kalau tak nanti dia makan awak punya hard disk. Okay. Boleh. Okay. okay, so we continue part C kalau tak ada apa-apa. Okay, uh, assume that you are already logged into your Google Drive. You have to open your Google Drive to look at more apps. So let me open my Google Drive. So you can click new, you can click more, and you can, uh, if you don't have Google Collab, you can connect more apps lah. So it, let's say lah, we proceed with Google more apps. So search for collaboratory, okay, this one. And then just run this. But this is basically for you to download. So I don't want to download anything. That's why I'll just Google collaborate collaboratory. Okay. 
Uh, and then I'll just click this because I don't want to download again. I'm not, I don't have any problems with my internet connection. You, no matter where I go, I'll always have my internet connection to orang kata bagus lah. So I don't have any issue with that. So that's why I'll just use the online version. But for you, if let's say you're going back home ke apa ke, this weekend, tak ada internet kat rumah. So you might want to download lah the Google Collab tadi tu. Uh, so if you want to do your work. But uh, so this shows how to download it. Uh, basically, you have to install everything in your ni lah, computer. But for me, uh, I'll just skip these steps because again, this is basically direct for straightforward punya steps. So just do it on your own if you don't know. And once you have downloaded that, you'll be able to see this page. Lah. So now we'll go to new notebook. Okay, and then you'll be able to see this page. Okay, so uh, I think uh, we've already done this quite extensively in Lab 3, so there's no need for me to uh, go into detail that much. But just so you know, this is called, this area here is called Top Toolbar. And uh, this is code area, lah. that's all. So again, if you want to change it, Change the name here. Uh, lab five C, for example, and then you can start to code. Lah. First, you okay. Uh, previously, I haven't told you this, but just in case there's any issue with the server, you might want to click connect first to see that. Uh, whether there is a server available for you. You don't want, uh, what you don't want is actually, okay, the, the reason this step is important is because what you don't want to do is you code uh, maybe 100 or 400 lines, for example, and suddenly when you trying to run the code, it shows that server is not available. Uh, so that's going to be a problem to you. Lah. So that's why before we start, click connect first to make sure that there is a server from the Google site that is available for you to store all the works so that it will be lost if there is any power outage or whatever. So it's safety step. Lah. So now it shows that there is a server for me. And then there are, it's actually how much? Eh? Uh, this is 100 tera, uh, 1 tera. Available RAM is 13 GB, 15 GB, I guess. So uh, 16 GB, yeah. Kalau 12 GB, let me 16 GB. Uh, so there's a, a server available for me to do my work here. So uh, for the for the first part, we'll be coding this. Uh, but okay, since uh, again we want to be more fluent with writing uh, Python, so you might want to type it in like I am right now, which is just a simple two lines, and then you can just run it by by clicking the arrow button here the play button let it run and then you'll be able to see the output which is monday november 29th and the time is 7 26 okay be reminded this is not our local time you have to remember malaysia is plus eight from gmt so gmt uh, zero or if let's say gmt is seven so this should be uh rapper. Ah, betul lah, 8 tambah 8 7 tambah 8 3, uh, Pukul 3 lah So uh, Dia punya day, uh, time ni is GMT time and But today is today lah Tarikh, tarikh and Monday is Monday lah Cuma time tu may be different because They are using Google uh, sorry, GMT time So um, <coughs> We've completed Until step 9 so let's say uh, maybe you want to continue code and you don't want to see this because this is just more on to double check. So you want to delete this so that the code looks more orang kata cantik. So boleh pangkah output ni and then continue code lah. Code, 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 and then run lagi sekali tengok okay tak. Okay, let's say, for example, you want to have another subsection of a code under this. 
So you uh, previously kita klik kod sini. The other way is to hover over the bottom of the previous cell and click code and you'll be able to see the code that you want. Okay, so uh, the, the cell that you want. So for this time around, they want us to code and plot the output x equal to sin theta. So in order for me to do that, I don't want to type every single thing here to be more efficient. I'll just paste. Okay. So since, uh, you, of course, it's up to you if you want to uh, type it in. But basically, uh, this is the code that you want to use. And the equation here, x equal to sin theta, is actually this part here, amplitude. This is sin theta. This is x. And np is the pomala. And I'm not quite sure uh, the pomala punya arrangement because I'm not familiar with uh, uh, np library ni but i would assume ni pemala ni lah macam uh, equation trigonometry sin sin apa lah sin lah so there's no point out kita, kita we are not going to detail so much on the equation we are just trying to understand how to use collaboratory so i don't want to explain more on that equation so we'll just click run so this is the output that you should get which is similar to the lab version so that means you are successfully code. Uh, uh, you have successfully code and a scene output based on Google Colab that uses Python. Okay, so this is the result that you need to include in your lab sheet. Eh? Okay, that's it. Uh, maybe, maybe uh, after a few code line, you find out that like, okay, you don't need this this cell here, this two cell. So if this uh, example here is actually back in 2019, so that back then there should be a delete cell over here. But since they have updated their Google Collab, you can just click this, this uh, trash can icon. So it's similar compared to this. It's much more easier. Just click this, it will remove the excessive uh, cell that you might don't want to use. Okay. Okay. That's it. We are approaching the last session of today. So for this exercise, it's quite different. As you can see, uh, they want us to code this uh, equation x and y, and it's already been put here and p sin theta. So you don't have to do anything here. The only thing that you need to do is to replace x x, which is this one x x here to the last two digits or digit of your student ID. For example, in this case, um, hold on here. Ah, 2020, So the last student ID is five and six. Lah. So you have to replace five and six into the code. Here, gap should be five and six. That is an example, but for you, because uh, this is your personal report, I want to see your personal student ID be put here. Okay, so if let's say your student ID is 2020123765, and then 65 is here, and then run the code, and then uh, put the resultant plot and the code into your lab sheet. That should be all. Okay, so to end to this punya session, basically uh, you need to provide a discussion on the limitation of using cloud and drive to, to, to the best of your knowledge. Yeah. Okay, and of course, uh, okay, for part A here, the same with the other class, I'm not actually understand how they want us to do actual experiment considering you guys don't have LED resistance and the power cells battery uh, readily available to you. So uh, I will get back to you how we can um, come up with this. But uh, the disadvantage and advantages of performing experiments in the cloud, that one you need to put in your uh, in your lab report, lah, lab sheet, uh, to the best of your knowledge. Okay.
So I will get back to you on how to compare part A with actual experiment here. You, my expectation is you don't, you may not have to do this, but I'll double confirm with my colleagues. But basically, that's all for today. Basically, uh, I've already discussed on how to use cloud software, cloud storage, and cloud computing. Sekejap je. Dua setengah, tiga setengah. Sejam. Settle dah experiment hari ni. Any questions so far? So we need to install the Google Drive offline. Uh, Google Drive offline, if you have it, uh, no, for, uh, for lab experiment, you don't have to. But you personally, you might want to do if you have uh, apa, nak simpan kerja -kerja apa -apa ke, boleh lah. But for, for this coursework, you don't have to lah. Okay. okay. Oh, sorry. Let me double. Saya patah balik. You need to. Sorry. You need to. Because you need to prove to me. Sorry, eh, saya terbabas. Padahal tadi dia cakap lah. Ni. You need to upload the web-based Google Drive. Uh, no. Um... Mm, yeah, I, I think I still think uh, even though they doesn't doesn't uh, mention it to you, but I want you to install it. Uh, to you can use your personal Google Drive. Put it put the file part A tadi tu yang BRD tadi tu in your personal Google Drive. Just snapshot, and then uh, compare that with the online version punya Google Drive, the web base. Uh, contoh saya punya ni, and yang ni, and then make sure ada lah dalam ni. Compare it, put into your lab sheet. I would rather have that rather than you submitting one by one to me your BRD file. Okay, because BRD file tu, I, I assume semua orang pun dah boleh buat senang je tadi kan. So, uh, so. Sir, tanya sir. Yep, boleh. Uh, lepas kita dah adjust yang gap tu. Yep. Memang akan dapat bentuk relief ke sir? Oh, ah, to up to you lah. I don't know. That, that is, I, I think it depends on. Is it XX number yeah. tu? Saya dah jelas lah ikut nombor ID saya. Theta. Oh, depends on theta. So your ID lah ikut number you lah. Hmm. I don't have. Uh, actually, I can. Actually, kita boleh jalan. Tapi saya tak nak. Saya nak awak buat sendiri. So if you got your love, then. Take it lah. As, yeah. as the proof. Oh. Thank you, Sam. Welcome. Any other question before we end the session? No, sir. All right. So if there is none, then I guess we can conclude our session today with Tasbiki Farah and Surah Walas. Okay, thank you all. Thank you for joining and thank have a great day. Much, have a thank nice you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Stay safe, sir. Welcome. Thank you, sir. 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 Welcome. Thank you, sir. Thank you, guys. Yeah, we're going to go. 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 We're going to go